I always admired Quentin, and I was here with a couple of Aussie journalists who had just come from interviewing Quentin. And they said, uh, Darren Tito really digs you. And I said, oh, look, forget it. About four or five months later, he calls. No agent, no casting director, nothing like that. He calls my business manager's office. I want to talk to Rod. And so I got the message, and I said, w what's the number? So I called saying, which one of my drunken friends is you know, doing it this early in the morning? He comes out of a casting meeting, and it is Quentin Tarantino. We start talking like a couple of old women for at least an hour about his movies, my movies, our movies, somebody else's movies, 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 like we've known each other for 20 years. And finally I said, uh, well, uh, what, what are you doing? And he said, I'm making a movie about World War II. I thought, well, okay, yeah. And he said, well, not really World War II, it's kind of a, well, it's just World War II. I said, okay, what do, you, what, do you, what do you want me to do for you? I'll do anything. And I very nearly retracted that. But he said, I want you to play Winston Churchill. I said, uh, I said, you're shooting in Germany? He said, yeah. Does that matter? And I said, well, you're right across the channel from England, and there's Albert Finney. He's done Churchill about six times. And he said, if Rod Taylor turns me down, I'll call Albert Fiddy. Well, there's your friend for life. I would have done anything for him. And so that's how it happened. That is a proud endeavor, that gentleman. Well said, sir. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I saw Quentin direct, and it was the most exciting, exhilarating thing I've ever seen. He sits behind the cameraman, whether he's on the sticks or on a dolly, he's sitting right behind him, and he's focusing on the scene, and either his, he loves his actors. And there are only three of us in the whole scene. And he's focusing with delight on his face or intense kind of interest in every word. And there's none of this crap of, of a monitor in another room and a director screaming directions. He's right there on top of it. And, uh, you know, just loving every single minute of it. So this is heaven. <laughs> when you're pleased to think, you know, that take really worked. That was great. He'd say, fantastic. Let's go again. And you think, what? And he said, why we go again? Because we love making movies. We're going to do one more. What? Because. I'm very lucky to have worked with some monumental directors. I mean, George Stevens, uh, John Ford. I mean, Jack and I were very close, did some wonderful work. Hitchcock, you know, uh, uh, Jack Cardiff is a one. Quentin loves Jack Cardiff because he's got a wonderful visual kind of directorial sense, a photographic director. <clears throat> But I noticed about Quentin immediately, I had never met such a passionate, young director. We're going to move in on the Prime Minister. I think Quentin, by his sheer outrageous uh, going against 
the rules and making something exciting and electrifying will stand out more than any of the people I've told you I admire. He will make a difference to the way people regard movies. You know, I, I saw things like Pulp Fiction about six or seven times. It was crazy. It became a drug because he just did things and got inside you and got a message across that the others were merely giving you as a gift. Uh, we've photographed this scene, now look at it. And he says, can you take this? Look at it. It's a difference. It's an excitement and it's new to making movies. I mean, the, 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 the set was electric, I thought, because of him, and that's Quentin. <laughs> I, I, he's crazy, genius crazy. And it was, I loved every second of it. And to watch a man like that work is a treat. Uh, we have to do a picture wrap right now on the great Rod Taylor. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the, a funny story of the second day where he did open up totally. In Australia, and I promised our guys at Foster's, the people who make Foster's beer make another beer called Victoria Bitter. And it's a f very famous and a much better beer. And it's never exported anywhere. Anyway, the second day we're working, the first day we worked till like 11 o'clock. Because he, he doesn't care about time or food or anything. He's, he's making, we love making movies. And so we finished around 11 o'clock and that means I get back into Berlin around 12 and have a, you know, a, a room service meal with Carol and it's late. So the next day I'm there and I said to the, one of the assistants, I said, what, what, do, you, what do you figure, how, how late tonight? And he said, oh shit, Rod, maybe, maybe 9.30. I said, yeah, I figured. And then a little German assistant came up and said, Herr Taylor, it's a wrap. I said, what? It was about five o'clock. I thought, oh, great. Is my car there? Why not? She said, but Herr Tarantino wants you to stay here. He wants to see you. I thought, oh, Christ. what have I done? I've screwed up Churchill. <laughs> and anyway. <laughs> I sit there and I've still got my makeup on and I've you know, fat old clothes and the whole thing and I'm worried sick. There's a knock on the door and in comes Tarantino with a bucket full of Victoria Bitter, which you can't find anywhere in the world but Australia. And he said, let's talk about our movies. Now the one of yours that I loved and so on, so, and he goes into these things. And another strange thing I noticed, apart from him loving some of my movies, much less me loving his, was the fact that a lot of young German people working on the set knew me. And I, I don't do publicity anymore, and my movies haven't been seen there for quite a while, a few television, but they say, hello, Rod. You know, I, I, oh, guten Tag, oh. Uh, danke schön, Rod. Oh, da, oh, danke schön, yeah. <laughs> and he'd been showing my movies at night. Not only mine, but everybody's. He'd, he'd show them to the crew. Just to say, you know who we're working with tomorrow? Look at this. He's just, he's like, he's like a magnificent genius kid sometimes. As any, anyway, he told me fully. He even told me that he still got a photograph I sent him when he asked for an autograph. Un I said, you what? He said, yes. I'd done some movie in Europe, and he, he wanted an autographed picture, and I sent it to him. And he appreciated it, and still had it. And I'm thinking, I'm working with the great Tarantino, and he tells me about this stinking photograph. <laughs>